okay so today we will start a new lecture so here the topic of the lecture will be resultant stress when a column of rectangular section is subjected to an eccentric load so first of all we need to understand what does that sentence or that statement mean so here say uh, assume a rectangular column okay just a minute so here if i can show you see this is the rectangular section uh, we are going to evaluate so suppose this is a rectangular column as if you are standing in front of this rectangular column and you are just watching the elevation part of the column so whatever whether it be circular or rectangular you will see that rectangular phase right so let's assume that this is a rectangular column so here let us analyze that what happen what happens see if the force coming with the symmetry of this uh, axis this major axis so why am i speaking about major axis because the major amount or the major dimension of this column is parallel to this axis that is why we are calling this, this as a major axis so see there there can be two condition here if by uh, i i mean associated to, to this axis what happens the force can be applied exactly par exactly parallel to this axis mean in this way the load can come mean exactly to the center this is the center part so the force can come in this way or the force can come in this way mean some distance some carrying distance from the center part of the column so the force can be applied in this way as well so the force can come in central way or the force can come in eccentric way that term eccentric come in this scenario so the eccentricity is created in this way this is the eccentricity scenario where the force has not been applied or the force is not subjected in a centric way the center of the rectangular part is not associated to the uh, generate the generation of force so what will happen in this scenario see so if the force is coming in this way what happens the axial stress will be developed definitely see this is the axial stress so if suppose if you are pushing this column in this manner so someone is sitting over this column okay so uh, an axial stress will be developed and if that force is in a centric way there will be only axial stress but say someone is sitting at that point not in a centric not in a centric part so, say you are sitting just you have just uh, apply the force at this part not in a centric part so what will happen an axial force stress will be developed and some moment will be developed because there will be a certain amount of distance associated with this scenario so the moment will be occurred so in this scenario the axial stress and the bending stress will be developed this two stress will be developed right so say you you have you have sat in that position not in a center part of the chair say this is a chair okay so you have just sat upon the chair just by um, remaining some part of this chair in that point so there will be a moment creation so you will be tend to fall or topple down from the chair right so there will be a certain amount of creation of moment so there will be two stress one is axial stress another is bending stress so this is the concept of that section or the part so let us come to the denomination what we are going to deal with in this equation so p here p is the eccentric load on column see this p is the eccentric load why this has been called as eccentric load as i have already said that this load is slightly deviated from its center so this kind of a 
load will generate a moment and this load is called as eccentric load e is known as eccentricity of the load mean the distance the distance for which the moment will be created and this is sigma 0 sigma 0 mean that uh, subscript is 0 mean there is no bending this is a axial or direct stress so if the p is coming directly from the center the stress will be only direct stress or axial stress so that is known as sigma 0 and sigma b is bending stress so that stress will create a bending stress some amount of bending will be developed due to that moment so that type of stress will be known as bending stress B is the width of the column, D is the depth of the column. So the area will be B into D. So which one is B? This, this, this is the elevation part. Let us come to the cross-sectional part. This is the cross-section you are watching right now here or the plan. So here this is B. The longer dimension is B and the shorter dimension is D. So the width of the column and the depth of the column so area will be b into d so the moment moment will be what load into the eccentricity as we already know that move some load into the distance is moment so here that distance is the eccentricity so that will be p into e so that p into e will develop or create a moment so that will be our m which will be in kilonewton meter or or whatever be the uh, the respected unit you are using as of for the force and the distance so the direct stress sigma 0 is given by this so as we know that stress is nothing but load per unit area so here load is p that p and the area is that cross sectional area of the column so these two type of forcing scenario will be developed so now from the bending theory we have already come through or or have gone through this equation m by i equal to f by y or sigma by y mean the moment divided by the moment of inertia of that particular section the moment developed mean m is the moment developed at that section divided by the bending the moment of inertia equal to the bending stress that sigma b the bending stress divided by the y what is y y is that the distance from the neutral axis yy this is the yy axis so any distance from this axis will be our small y so the bending stress sigma b due to moment at any point of the column section at a distance y from the neutral axis y y is given by this equation so we have already come um, we have already come to know this equation so this is the further extension of that uh, or the extension application of this formula so okay so sigma b so we can simplify that sigma b can be represented as plus minus m by i into y so that bending stress can be positive can be negative right so how can we define it it can be positive and negative through this factor y mean the distance can be in the negative coordinate of y from the y axis or the positive coordinate of the y axis so we can state that positive negative for this factor of of sigma b so here i is the moment of inertia of the column section about the neutral axis see we can adopt the area part of the section right why are why we consider the moment of inertia because if you can see that any kind of a structure or any kind of a thing this is a simple structure or a rectangular structure right so if we um, if this uh, if this um this structure say 
if 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 this is a tapered structure uh, tapered structure or the shape of the structure would have been something different right so the simple concept of area may not be applicable to judge this uh, forcing stress right so in that scenario the moment of inertia come into the place so the moment of inertia will give me the uh, the actual form of any structure area is only the breadth and the width of the structure right but there can be a very complicated uh, kind of a shape there can be a circular shape there can be a oval shape there can be a tapered shape there can be a zigzag shape so for individual shape the moment of inertia will be different so that moment of inertia will help me to judge or analyze the stress what amount of stress will be coming or the what amount of stress will be exerted to that structure so here uh, for the y y axis the moment of inertia will be d b cube why d b cube because here see that d is the smaller dimension right so here we have uh, 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 don't get confused if this would have been our d then we would uh, would have write the uh, bd cube right but the smaller dimension here is given as d that is why this is db cube by 12 so substituting the value of i so let us put that value of i into that place m by i into uh, y so after putting that formation of i we can simplify our sigma b to be 12 m by db cube into y so this is our generalized equation now the bending stress depend upon the value of y see the other factors here will be constant we know the force we know the eccentricity we know the dimension of the uh, structures now that y in which i mean what amount of uh, or um, yes what amount of direction from the y axis will differ or will give me the change of that sigma b so that that is the varying part here y so the bending stress at the extreme is obtained by substituting y equal to b by 2 see that b by 2 here this is the b and b by 2 at this point the bending stress will be extreme right so here so we can put our y equal to b by 2 in the place of this part so y is our varying uh, um, i mean variable so here after putting that value we can get our simplified our simplified formula to be 6p into e divided by a into b 6 into load applied or subjected load to the column into the eccentricity divided by the area of the section into the width of the section so this is our simplified form or equation so next come to the next part of uh, the explanation here see this is the position of the load right so just imagine if the load is subjected here or the load is subjected here right so uh, I, as if just assume that you are sitting in that point of the column so what will happen this column will try to bend in this manner right in this manner okay so if the force is applied in this direction or just assume you are sitting at this part of this column right so this part of column how it will tend to react so it will bend from this side or it will bend from this part right so here this will be in a this fiber of this column will be in compression and this fiber of the column will be in tension see from the top view that position of load is applied in here so the maximum stress where the compression will be developed is this and the minimum will be this so here this has been explained in this part so let us assume that sigma max is equal to maximum stress so stress along bc so this is bc stress along bc and stress along ad so the maximum will be at bc and minimum stress will be ad so now 
just uh, let me just go through this line so it will be much more clear if y is taken positive in same side of y y axis as load then bending bending stress will be of the same type as the direct stress here mean just the way i have just told that if the the y the y distance is the same side if the y distance at the same side of this y y axis so that bending stress will nothing but react similar to the axial stress or the direct stress here direct stress is compressive and hence bending stress will also be compressive toward the right of the axis y y similarly bending stress will be tensile toward the left of the y y mean in this side left side taking compressive stress as positive and tensile as negative so that is the thing i i have just explained so how can we evaluate the maximum stress here so the what will be the consideration of the maximum stress so we have already known that the bending stress and the axial stress will be applied to this kind of a forcing system so incorporating this two kind of thing we can evaluate the maximum stress here so the maximum stress will be incorporated with the direct stress and bending stress so the maximum one, one will be positive and the minimum one will be negative so here direct stress mean the directly coming force towards the center of the column this will be our direct stress plus the bending stress the bending stress is developed due to the eccentric force uh, into the column so in this scenario that force will create a bending stress and that stress will also create some compressed compressive or the direct stress in the column so this two type of stress the maximum stress will be the positive of or the accumulation of this two type of stress so that will be sigma 0 plus sigma b is equal to that see the direct stress is nothing but our force divided by area plus our bending stress is we have just evaluated this equation 6p into e divided by a into b so taking common that p by a we can get this one and by reducing or by just uh, just minus for the minus sign this will be same only p by a 1 plus minus 6 into e by b that will be our sigma max and minimum okay so this is the concept of our resultant stress when a column of rectangular section is subjected to an eccentric load so this kind of concept you will get to know or you will uh, you will see that more moreover in a column section design or uh, for a hydraulic structure for a dam structure you will be introduced to that kind of formula that these formula will be required in in those kind of structure there will be many more structure to go with this formula so i have just given you the example so the problem regarding this formula will follow to the next video thank you